And what they come up with here is something called the Panzer Division. The Panzer Division. Panzer is the German word for armor. Armor. Armor is what you kind of more formally refer to as tanks. We call tanks informally tanks, but a bit, a bit more formally we call, them, we call them armor. And of course, I hope you all have been following the news about Germany sending leopard tanks to Ukraine, which uh, for the first time you're going to see German tanks fighting Russians again since World War II. The Soviets aren't, or the Soviets, the Russians aren't happy about this, is because a tank, as we're seeing here with the Germans in 1939, a tank fundamentally is an offensive weapon. It is a weapon around which all combined arms, infantry, artillery, mounted cavalry, even air power, revolves around. If you are attacking, the tank is the centerpiece of the attack, okay? So, so what we're doing in sending those tanks to Ukraine today is we're essentially saying we want them to go on the offensive. We want the Ukrainians to take the offensive. So that's one of the things that's scaring the Russians today. Ideally, ideally, all military weapons, though, even though they're capable of killing people, the point of a military weapon is not to kill people. It's to deter wars, at least from a Western standpoint. It is to deter wars. Uh, I certainly don't think the Germans have any designs on gaining Lebensraum or anything this time. But, um, and it was, it was a big deal. It was a big deal for the Germans because the Germans are aware of the stigma of the damage they did in World War II. And that's one of the reasons why they were very reluctant to commit their tanks to battle um, even though they're not the ones that are going to use them. Each Panzer Division holds roughly 300 tanks. 300 tanks. The most... Uh, let's see, do I have it here? Yeah, the, well... No, I don't have it there. The most significant here is... The, or these tanks here. I thought I had a header there. But these are the Panzer IVs. The Panzer IVs. Panzer number 4. Armor number 4. These were medium tanks... They're not particularly powerful against some of these heavier tanks, as we'll see, but they get the job done, particularly earlier in the war, and they're fairly mobile. They're fairly quick, relatively quick. So each Panzer division contains roughly 300 tanks. But it's not just 300 tanks, boom, that's a Panzer division. As I say, we simply build our combined arms around the tanks, which means with the tanks, we also have motorized infantry. Motorized infantry we have a, a significant number of trucks whose job it is to carry infantry. And then if, 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 if we meet resistance, the infantry can quickly unload and, and engage with that. But also, too, another incredibly important part of the Panzer Division, each of these tanks and constituent elements all have signals units, and they all have radios. Each tank has a radio so that you can actually radio for uh, air assistance from the Luftwaffe. Now, in a way, the Luftwaffe, the Air Force, is going to take on the role traditionally held by artillery. Normally, if you're fighting, you get to a strong point, you've got to take that strong point, you bring in your heavy guns. Your heavy guns start shelling it, you're able to take it. We're moving so fast, it takes a long time to bring the guns up and to get them ready. It's easier just to call in an airstrike. You call in an airstrike, they take it out so you can go through. But, but also critically, too, a big part of this idea here is you want your tanks, your, your mobile elements, to essentially not engage with strong points and take them, but go around them so they can surround them, cut their supply lines, cut their communications, and then other forces can come up from the rear and kind of mop up, right? That's kind of the idea here. And so to this extent, the Panzer Division will restore mobility to the battlefield. It will restore mobility after the stagnant way World War I was fought. Now, I believe it is Time Magazine will actually call what they're seeing here, they'll call this the Blitzkrieg. Blitzkrieg. Blit, literally, this means lightning war. They'll say this is the Blitzkrieg. And this catches on, and pretty soon... A lot of people, even Germans, use that term blitzkrieg. But that is not what the Germans initially call it. That's not what the Germans designed. They actually call it Bewegungskrieg. Bewegungskrieg. War of movement. War of movement. So this is a revolution. This is literally a revolutionary new type of warfare. Now, as I say, other people were looking at this in, in France... Among others, Charles de Gaulle was really proposed, you know, a proponent of, of tanks and this kind of warfare. In the Soviet Union, I believe we talked about a few weeks ago, Mikhail Tukhachevsky 
He was designing something that was very similar to this. He called it deep operations before he was killed. In the United States, you had had some tank officers that were really thinking tanks were the way to go, but unfortunately, there was l virtually no budget in the 1920s and 1930s for the military. The United States just was not paying for a military, and so we couldn't develop stuff like this in the United States at the time. Hitler wanted war. He's preparing for war. He is, he's doing this. And one thing, too, about Hitler is Hitler backs the military innovators. Hitler backs the military innovators. One of the greatest innovators here was a guy named Heinz Guderian. He was a general named Heinz Guderian, and he backs Guderian. He's also going to back um, airborne operations. There's a guy named Kurt Student, who was a Luftwaffe general, student, just like your students. His name was Kurt Student, and he um, essentially says we can, we can get past strong points, we can by, bypass places using large airborne operations, and Hitler's going to back that guy as well. So Hitler... He was a gambler, and he backs military innovators. Okay, he backs military innovators. And again, and I'll, we'll, we'll get into this more as we go on. There's always this, there's this trend, there's this this idea because we hate Hitler because he was an asshole, which he was. We tend to think he was a complete idiot when it came to military matters, and that's not true. I think Hitler was actually a very very good military strategist until about Stalingrad, when he just kind of surrenders that to wishful thinking. But early in the war. I think Hitler was actually quite astute in many military matters. And many of his generals were really good captains, but not necessarily great strategists. And we'll, we'll discuss this more as we go on.